Hi there. Good afternoon, Kemp Cho from Up New Ahmedabad. Welcome to the Recruitment Curry Show. We live in a fast-paced environment and we are spread out 24/7. So today we're going to be talking about using mindfulness to navigate uncertainty in business. Welcome to our, our, our show, uh, Kaitan. Uh, Kaitan is the CEO uh, of Bakiam Futures. Kaitan, good afternoon from Ahmedabad. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. So, so Kaitan, you obviously. Uh, you are someone who practices mindfulness and then uh, you know obviously you, you you work out regularly you know you you attend so many events and then obviously you manage a recruitment business so you know uh, how it is you know you switch on 24/7 and today we want to hear from you you know your thoughts on starting with you know what is mindfulness sure uh so f- mindfulness it's it is personal and it it means different things to different people for me personally it's being in, aware of the present moment being aware of my surroundings and actually being fully engaged in the now um and i i use mindfulness to create certainty in my life and 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 sort of clear the the noise and actually focus on on the task at hand don't try and look too much forward uh, i certainly don't look back unless i'm i'm looking at the lessons that have been learned so i i incorporate it into my, as i say into my daily life uh and i and, and throughout the day and people aren't even aware that i'm i'm doing breathing breathing techniques etc so it's something that's very personal but it keeps you in the now and keeps you focused on what's 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 uh present it also allows you to adapt very quickly to change it creates a mental agility um and it just i i remain calm in all situations because of the mindfulness that i practice totally totally so you know of course it starts with being you know, being self aware and then one thing that that i sort of uh, you know learned from from reading it and and you know practicing it a bit is is uh, being self aware and then you know focusing on on uh, on your life you know especially starting with breathing like you mentioned that you know just as if you want to live in the moment you know focus on your breath breathe in breathe out totally totally and, so I, i yeah just to get yeah. into the zone i take three deep breaths and I, and I'm fully focused on the breath going in and the breath going out ideally i take the the breath in for the uh, for the nose and then out through the mouth and as long as possible so and then it, it gets you into the zone of it completely puts you in the in the in the moment and you remind yourself you know what's happening now rather than so they it just gives you a more sort of a proactive approach react rather than as opposed to reactive exactly and you know especially in 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 business and lives you know we we are either you know very well connected to to the past or always end up thinking about tomorrow or the future uh which ultimately leads to anxiety i'm sure you know a lot of us go through this uh especially when working in recruiting and then you know you, you put forward the candidates uh for the interviews or you know will, will they answer my call will they not will they turn up for the interviews will they not and then you know you have to remind yourself that you know i can do things which are in my control and starting with being self aware completely completely i mean it this this not just in business just just in life in general it reduces stress it it, it increases your productivity you now being mindful and actually spending a, even even in times of stress taking a couple of minutes out and and grounding yourself and re rethinking situations it just increases productive with productivity and it just gives you you make better decisions right rather than rush decisions and what i tend to do if it's uh, something i'm i'm unsure of I'll, i'll write it down or i'll i'll leave it in drafts and re- revert back to it after i've done mindfulness and quite often my response will be different after i've practiced mindfulness than than I, than i've so i i don't actually send something if i'm unsure and i kind of go within and 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 reassess and how would i be if i was a recipient of that how would i take it because sometimes messages can be misconstrued over email as opposed to verbally or 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 in person so again i use it as i say um but equally importantly increases patience as well as a father of four uh you know <laughs> i have to be patient um i mean my my life is full on both at, at work uh in the office and at home and and most importantly as as a result of mindfulness it gives you a better sleep i sleep very well for 7 hours unbroken and i i i you know i meditate just before i go to sleep do some breathing exercises first thing when i wake up in the morning i may 
do a bit of journaling before I start exercising. So it's, it's, it's just incorporated into my day. And when I first started practicing mindfulness about five years ago, Prior to that, if someone told me about the stuff I was doing now, I would I would have thought they were crazy, in all honesty, because it, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it sounds nuts, really. I actually start practicing, and I almost forced myself to incorporate it into my life. Now I don't know how I could do without it. It just elevates me in all areas, and I'm just constantly looking for to either learn or to add value and in all situations, and it's due to mindfulness that, that I have that. And I don't react... Uh, or, or certainly I don't make wrong decisions or quick decisions for the, for the wrong reasons. Thanks again to mindfulness. Totally, totally. So, you know, Adam, you know, you, you mentioned a, a very important point there in, in terms of reacting to situations or, you know, you receive an email, then, you know, you have this urge to respond. And then one thing that, that I've learned through mindfulness is, is acceptance of the situation, you know, as is that, you know, it has happened. Uh, there are things that, that you can do, you know, which are in your control. And a lot of times we have this urge to give it back that, you know, oh, I'm going to do this right now and I'm going to react. So, so one thing that, that, you know, I've sort of learned from mindfulness is, you know, accepting the situation, taking a step back, breathe in, draft your email, put it in the drafts and then, you know, review it or, you know, take the action later on when you're in the right frame of mind. You don't want a knee-jerk reaction. And that's, I think, one of the biggest benefits of mindfulness uh, and then you highlighted that five years back if somebody told you you know you, you'd laugh and then uh, oh, but you know you, you accepted this and then because there the are clear benefits that you outlined you know one is uh, a sound sleep most definitely and also um i i practice it more during the lockdown because just because of the uncertainty that was happening the whole moving business to to, to the virtual uh it Everything was alien, you know, no one knew how to react and just doom and gloom everywhere around me. And and I really, uh, I, I'm very lucky. So I, I live uh, on, on, on directly behind a golf course. So the golf course uh, was closed and I spent a lot of time, myself, my children, my dog, my wife, we, we spent a lot of time, there's lakes there, you know, going up onto the sort of hilly area and just spending time with myself and kind of really analysing life, analysing my business, analysing, what, what, you know, what, what, what I want to do in the future, how I can break it down into compartmentalised things and how I will meander through the uncertainty that, that uh, all of us were facing. And then that's, that's another great point you highlighted is, you know, we, we spend a lot of time uh, in the outer world, uh, you know, thinking about what's happening online or, you know, scrolling through our timelines, you know, on, on different platforms. Uh, and then, again, the another thing that, that mindfulness sort of teaches is, you know, you know look inward, you know, uh, spend time with yourself uh, on your own, you know, in nature, uh, wherever, you, you know, possible, you know, give, give some time on an average day, you know, for yourself, uh, be it by walking, running, working out, meditating. There are so many modes. Uh, of, of mindfulness and, and uh, it, it directly leads to you know the, the most uh, important factor that you mentioned is a sound sleep because a lot of people these days you know they, they struggle you know obviously sleeping because of lots of thoughts going in, in the background so the biggest benefit that I have sort of experienced is is, is a sound sleep uh, and, and uh, it, it needs a lot of work to be to be done and you know you, you mentioned about working out uh, so you know how do you you know dedicate your time towards mindfulness, working out, meditating, you know, all, all those things. So, so how can, you know, one integrate uh, mindfulness in daily lives? So look, there's going to be trade-offs, right? So in 2017, I actually stopped watching TV. Um, I mean, we, during, during lockdown, we, myself and my wife, we watched a couple of box sets, but barring that, I don't, I don't watch TV. I will spend that. So it was a trade-off. And in fact, my everything that I see on TV, specifically the news, was just negative. You know, it was just for negative images, negativity, negative. And and you actually feel completely lost. You feel and more hopeless rather than it wasn't positive, right? So that, that's where that's why I've got that extra two, two and a half, three hours a day where I sat on the sofa watching TV. I've got that time now. Once the children are in bed, you know, I, I've got me time. And also I, I, I start my day very early. So... I wake up around, my my alarm is, is set for 5 a.m. every morning, but about 4.40, my body clock will get me up. Even then, first thing I'll do some breathing exercises. I'll think to myself, four things I'm grateful for that happened yesterday. Then 
again, all this stuff I'm telling you, right? If you'd have told me I would be doing this and a few years ago, I would have I would have really laughed at you. Um, but then I then I now you know have a cold shower, a completely cold shower, walk my dog, uh, go to the gym, and I'm back home about 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 sort of quarter past seven in the morning, which is my wife's already got the children up. Then we'll help get them ready, school drop, and I'm, then I go to the office. So it doesn't even in, infringe on my day. You know, my exercise, my mindfulness, uh, it doesn't infringe on my day. And throughout the day as well, I do do breathing exercise. I'll be in the office and I'll and I'll do some breathing exercises. And those around me would, wouldn't even be aware unless they asked me. And I'll certainly share because I feel that, you know, anything I'm learning, if I even... By me telling you, I'm actually from a selfish point of view. I'm learning twice, aren't I? So, I, and, and and I'm still on a journey. And I feel the more I learn about mindfulness, there's more to learn, you know. So it's 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 and and the more I practice it, the more there is to learn. And the more the, the more I practice it, the more benefits there are in my life, not just in business, but also spiritually, emotionally, family relationship, everything. Like this, this all. All, all areas I'm, I'm benefit from and it takes very little of my time every day right it's just being yeah. fixed and it, it it kind of takes me away from procrastination i used to procrastinate a lot and you mentioned about scrolling there were times i used to scroll and scroll and scroll it would be two three o'clock in the morning and and i'm looking at funny cat videos and i'm i'm you know like it was just totally pointless scrolling and you'd wake up tired you wake up groggy you'd be unproductive um and again, mindfulness completely allevi alleviates all of that uh, time wasting for, for me personally. Yeah, and then you know you, you, you covered about uh, you know trade offs. So you know the, the biggest trade off is that you know you make yourself a priority, and then th that's a starting point. Uh, because you know the, the more you look at the outer world, you know about who's doing what or you know what what's happening out there, less of the time that you have for yourself, and then, you know irrespective of what part of the day you know you, you incorporate this into you know morning afternoon evening uh, th th there's always time you know if, if you got time to do always. something else and then you, you always got that half an hour you know you don't need a lot of time you start with you know walking running breathing whatever works for you and then you, you know, know what? Yeah, then you yeah. don't even need half an hour. You could do it for five minutes. It's really, it, you could, everyone can incorporate. It. And that's what I would propose. If someone's new to mindfulness, actually do it for a very short period of time. Just allow yourself to be in your thoughts and, and focus. And, and when you first start doing it, your mind will be rushing here, there and everywhere, right? So it's just bringing yourself back and focusing on your breath. And, uh, and really, honestly, it could take five minutes. And that five minutes makes the whole day go better. And I would urge everyone to even try it. You know, just to see how it is, and and it's simple as focusing on your breath. Four seconds in, four seconds out. Try and do that three, four times, and and just changes your whole your your, your sort of mindset. Um, there are all, also exercises I do in terms of sort of uh, mindfulness, but to start with, yeah, it's just focusing on your breathing. Can't hear you. Sorry, uh, you know you, uh, you you work out and obviously you lift weights as well. Do you think uh, mindfulness and lifting is, is is sort of interconnected and it improves your focus as well? Uh, you know, in your day to day life, then. You know, well, healthy healthy mind, healthy body, right? Or healthy body, healthy yeah. mind. So it, it's it's all part of. You've got to look after you know. For me, it's, it's, it's again an integral part of my life, and and I don't just lift weights. I do a lot of cardio uh, as well, uh, swimming, um, so running, cycling. But uh, during, even during that time, I, I could be listening to podcasts. I could be listening to mindfulness uh, stuff, and uh, it it it's integrated. It's actually it's it's all part of the same thing. It's not uh, it's not too separate entities you know my mindfulness and my exercise they go hand in hand so, sure. so you know i've got to look after my mind i've got to look after my spirituality and i look, got to look after my, my body right and 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 as you alluded to a bit earlier uh it's there's so many so much stuff going on in the world and social media will give you a picture of the world that's picture perfect and then you will look at your own life and start analyzing and thinking well why don't i have that why aren't i doing this and why is he got this or she's got this or why are my children like that you know it's about 
ultimately mindfulness is, is looking at yourself from inward and also competing against yourself and listening to your inner voice and your inner critique and also bettering yourself every day so it could more incremental incremental but you know you be you basically you tomorrow you want to be a better person than you are today whether it be meditation spirituality mindfulness helping others whatever it is adding more value small incremental gains lead to huge gains over a longer long period of time right so yeah i am my competition you are your competition and exactly uh, tomorrow than you are today you're winning Totally, totally. And you know, the, the bottom line is, you know, you, you want to be focused uh, in whatever part of, uh, you know, life you are, you know, personal or, or business, you know, th that you want to enhance. And then everything starts with, you know, starting being self-aware, accepting the situation. And then th the biggest thing that I also observed is, uh, you know, being patient with the results because, you know, it is on a slow burner. Uh, you, you, you invest in mindfulness today, you know, invest in, and that is yourself, you know, your time. And if, if you're going to expect a stock change, tomorrow or in a week, uh, you know, I think you're accepting too much, you know, you're, you're expecting too much from, uh, from that your process. Mind is, so your mind is a muscle, just like the gym, right? So if you go and do a session in the gym, you're not going to be ripped in a day, are you? So no. it, it, it's a long game. <laughs> it is a long game. So, you know, you, you have to be patient with the result and, you know, at the end of the day, trust the process rather than, you know, doing it for four days and then, you know, thinking, oh, it's not working out for me. L let me just try something else. <laughs> yeah absolutely you've got to trust the process you've got to trust the universe and sometimes you have to learn to get out of your own way you know don't hinder yourself oh yeah yeah and then i'm sure you know we, we are all uh, you know worst critics of ourselves uh compared to anybody else and then which is where the self-doubt uh and then uh, you know imposter syndromes lo lots of other things sort of come up as well and then that's where you start practicing you know like you mentioned even journaling is a form of you know, in mindfulness, you know, you are actually oh, putting out your thoughts. It. You put it down on pen to paper. Yeah, indeed. You journal. I, I journal so many aspects of my life. It may look like gibberish, but I, I revert back to it sometimes, if, periodically, just to see how far I've come and what changes I've made and what what, I, what changes I can make moving forward. But yeah, no, I, it really helps me. And I, again, it's something I I was would have a year and a half ago would have thought it's a bit odd to sort of write down your thoughts and stuff like that. You know, it wasn't very like I'm a business owner and, and, and I need to keep things inside. And, you know, it, it's, it's really like they're just putting things in paper, then compartment to breaking it down into sizable chunks, mini goals. And, and, and it's all part of mindfulness. Absolutely. And I, I think, you know, the, the another important point that you just sort of, you know, mentioned was I'm a business owner. And should I be journaling? Should I be putting down my thoughts on, on paper? Because, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I have a team to lead and I've got a business to manage. Is it childish? Is it something that, that a business owner would do? Uh, do whatever works for you, I, I would say. Absolutely. So me personally, like, I, I you know, I've never journaled before. And, and in fact, in the UK, there was, I remember in school, there was a, there was the secret diary of Adrian Mole or something, and this was a guy that was journaling his life through school. I'm talking probably in the in the late 70s, early 80s, and that was my only kind of exposure to, to, to someone journaling, and that was my negative connotation of journaling because I don't know if... Do you remember Adrian Mole? Do you remember that secret diary of Adrian Mole? No. But basically, so that that's what, that's what I thought journaling was, right? writing down your thoughts of what you're going through and then it, it was a book so you'd read this guy's day-to-day -day life um and i thought that was what journaling journaling's a lot more than that I, I i do graphs journaling could be you could even write you know do coloring word searches things that take your mind away from what 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 what's happening in business and then when you go back to what's happening in business so even on my lunch breaks i would do sudokus and crosswords this is all for me part of mindfulness yeah you, you want to detach as much as possible and you know come back to reality as well uh, and then again, you know, we, we were talking about, uh, you know, we passed now early on and, in, you know, b b before the, the LinkedIn live and then, you know, I was only there for five days, but it, it's intense. And, you know, what you're taught is just, just to sort of focus on yourself and then, uh, you know, be self-aware. Uh, life is, is changing you know, every fraction of second. Uh, and then the, the most important thing that, 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 that you learn out of it is that this too shall pass. Absolutely. So, so you have to assess, is life, life happening to you or is it happening for you? Yeah. 
exactly and, and uh, you know you, you want to make sure that you know you live in the present as much as possible and the technique is to you know for for, for me it was you know focusing on on the breath like, like you mentioned as well for, for someone else it's, it's something else you know maybe you, you spend an hour walking uh, in the woods or you know you lift weights or you run you know but, but whatever works for you yeah, but but detached from uh, you know what you're doing uh, you know from sort of doom scrolling and then just sorry yeah so so yeah absolutely so and then if you take because sometimes i used to think well look you know I, if i take 30 minutes out i'm wasting 30 minutes of time that i could be doing business development or other stuff but that 30 minutes that i take out makes the next three hours i could do what i would have done in i could do in three hours what i would have done in six hours right it makes me far more productive far more productive it's, so, it goes back to that story of, of sharpening the axe you know do you want to spend you know cutting the tree for eight hours or sharpen the axe for you know whatever three hours and cut the tree in half an hour uh and then you know i love the analogy yeah <laughs> so you know th that's how it is and then you know, th th the biggest part is you know being you know self-compassionate uh again start with yourself uh, and then you know because you know we, we spend all our time with, with, you know in the outer world when, when obviously we should be sort of thinking about ourselves ranging from uh, the the you know it affects the mental health at the end of the day because you know if you are distracted throughout the day uh, if and then obviously that leads to procrastination uh, and, and then you think that oh i'm not doing enough uh, because i'm distracted and then because you're distracted you're not doing enough and then at the end of the day or end of the month when you review that you know whatever has transpired and you haven't got those results it affects your sleep uh, day in day out so it's it's a downward spiral so at the end of the day you know use mindfulness to to your benefit you know start with five minutes and then increase it from there on in whichever form that you want to isn't it absolutely and you could do it at any time you know you could do it first thing when you wake up you could do it as you're going to sleep you could do it when you're commuting it's it's something personal that you could do um and it could as you said be as simple as a walk in walk in the park going to you know uh just taking regular time out from what you're doing just makes you more productive and it is very personal and it is something that uh you can do that won't won't sort of encroach on your day or or, or actually take up much time at all and, and as i say look commuting is a perfect time to to practice mindfulness absolutely and then, you know especially when you talk about business uh, one uh, factor i've seen it impacting is is your temperament uh, you know like you mentioned responding to emails uh, or you know it, it helps you refrain from knee jerk reactions totally. you, know, you, you know you're still very much controlled you know very much smooth and you you're just settling in and then when you're responding to those situations you know you got better relationships with your with, with your colleagues with your superiors with your clients with, yeah, absolutely mindfulness for me has made me not just you know, a better business owner but it's made me a better a parent, a better son, a better family member, a better member of society, just better generally. I'm, I, I am trying to be the best version of myself. Um, I'm not even trying. It's, 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 I, I'm, I'm, I'm a better version of myself than I used to be. There's lots of room for improvement with everything, but mindfulness for me has actually made me, you know, uh, get to. I mean, if you look at the analogy, the top of a mountain is the bottom of another mountain, right? But I, I have I, I, I've reached certain milestones that I never thought I would. But now that I'm, I've reached them, that doesn't mean I've become complacent and I think, right, I've made it or whatever. There's, 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 there's bigger goals that I, weren't even, I wasn't even aware of previously. And mindfulness is all part of that process that makes me see things differently, makes me more composed, makes me far less reactive you know, uh, and, and, and rather than sort of knee-jerk reactions, as you, as you said earlier, I, I, I think through my my response, I also try and look at it from the other person's perspective and why did this happen? Or, or, or you know, what, what what would they want? If I was in that situation, what response would I want? Or what 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 value can I add? You know, if any any situation, it just makes me more analytical um, and, and I look for the best outcome for everyone involved. Because of so, you know, you know, being composed is, 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 I think, one of the biggest benefits uh, that you highlighted. And then, you know, it leads to, you know, uh, compassion for yourself and, you know, for somebody else as well. And then, you know, it directly leads to being more uh, empathetic uh, towards others, uh, you know, putting yourself in, in their shoes. 
uh, when, when responding to the situations and there's always room for improvement like, like you mentioned so you know I, I think mindfulness has way more benefits just beyond business uh, basically you know if, if you were to sum up it, it is improved relationships with yourself and uh, you know others around you isn't it absolutely absolutely and i have and i have some some sort of uh, it's it's not only that it's it's just uh, you, you you it kind of almost gives you the you identify potentially situations before they even occurred you can with through mindfulness you can actually see the signs that this is going to happen and actually uh preempt it and, and act accordingly you know um it, your, your 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 thought your thought processes the solutions you come up with are certainly better you evaluate things far more ethically rather than again like as like you said before uh knee-jerk reaction and um it just makes you it helps me to sort of remain composed in all situations um and 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 not even get too excited about the wins and and not get dismayed by the losses because they're not really losses it's, they're, these, these are things that you can learn from and how can you do things different um and you obviously you have to there will be trade-offs as as you progress in, in the mindfulness journey certain people will, may not understand what what you're going through but Overall, if it's making you a better person, then it's, it's fully beneficial, isn't it? And totally, it, it totally. alleviates stress. That's the main thing. I used to be very, I used to get stressed out about the littlest things. I'm really stressed out. And it would affect, I'd be rat, snappy, I'd be ratty. Uh, I couldn't sleep because I'd be replaying things in my mind and all this type of thing. And mindfulness is completely, even just telling you about it, it's like, it's a distant memory now. The way I used to react to things, it's like, was that even me? <laughs> you, you just start with accepting the situation, and uh, you know, and, and then you know things sort of start working out for you because yeah. you, you don't react. And then yeah. you know, if, if if you go back to all, all the situations when I, when I say you know, obviously all of us is I'm sure you know th there were instances in our lives where we think that oh, if I hadn't reacted in a certain way, uh, things could have been different. And this is you know ranging from friendships to professional relationships, you know, everything. Absolutely, absolutely, and some and it, and and you see opportunities where you may have not seen them before as well. You know, it, you so it's not just uh, having a different reaction, but actually preempting opportunities. Because you're looking at it in a, in a different way. You're not you're not looking at it like this. You know, yeah. obviously, because you you're calm and composed. You you got a better view of life than in you know, situations that okay, fine. You know, what's not 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 what's in front of me, but you know what's probably. Hundred feet away, and so yeah. you have a different perspective of life, you know, which which you covered. So I, I think uh, to, to sum it up, uh, Ketan, you know, you would say that it helps you become a better person, you know, in all sort of you know factors of life. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and and I, I mean, we mainly spoke about breathing, but there's a there's another thing that I do, and I do quite often, is that I take a, a sheet of paper, divide it divide it into three, and then I write down how things are now in the business how things I, I i want them to be and and i give myself either a one uh two three or five year sort of challenges and, I, and i'll group them into what, what how long that i i want to achieve that within and then the middle section i will then add the dots and this is really really mindful then you, you know and it's time you spend to yourself and it's actually enjoying solitude right and making that time because life's so busy there's for me you know our home is busy my extended family, business, uh, I'll do a lot of networking and I do attend a lot of events, etc. So it's just finding these windows of time where I can spend time on myself, time on my business. And actually the answers are all within. If, if you, that most of the answers that people try and seek or validation from outside, you really need to start seeking validation from inside and actually listening to what, 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 what's been said to you, what, what you're telling yourself. And then, and also with the other thing we're talking about breathing, just beyond that, if people progress beyond the breathing, it's actually just relaxing, not just your eyes, but uh, relaxing your shoulders, you, you know, generally just, but you could be sat at your desk. Nobody even would be, you may not be speaking for two, three minutes, but other than that, nobody would be none the wiser that you've actually completely realigned yourself and then you go back at it again. And I, uh, and totally. Like periodically. Totally. No, it, it definitely works. Even, you know, breathing in, breathing out, you know, for a couple of minutes, uh, you know, brings you back uh, in focus, uh, self-aware that we are all mortal beings, and uh, you know, now is the time, not not Absolutely. yesterday, not, not tomorrow. 
it is now. So, you know, so, some wonderful tips there, you know, ranging from, you know, obviously helping with, uh, you know, being self-aware, composed, uh, you know, improving relationships. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, start start small and then, you know, be patient and, and then uh, go forth. Absolutely. The mind is a muscle. Remember that. So, you you know, you can't. It's like you go into the gym once and expect it to look at like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, Kedan, really nice having you on the Recruitment Curry Show uh, okay. from Ahmedabad. It's been a real Once pleasure. Um, and, and, you know, uh, and it's nice to speak to someone with the same name as me. I don't think I actually know <laughs> how to get them. So, <laughs> we both with their recruitment. What are the coincidences? So, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But thank you so much. Keep inspiring. Keep keep up the great work. Keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, yeah, keep inspiring. Thanks. Thanks once again, Kedan. Really, really wonderful having you here. Cheers. Take care.